welcome everyone. Uh, we are at PSEC, uh, Czech Republic, at the FMBB 2019. We are uh, with uh, Francois Massat this time, a uh, well-known trainer and uh, decoy from US, but originally from France. From France, France. Yes, correct, yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, do you want to tell us some things about yourself, uh, about your daily life and some... You just say I'm Francois Massard, but people call me Francois most of the time. Uh, I moved to USA, I was like four years ago, and now I'm living professionally from dog training. And uh, how you got involved uh, with dogs? So I got involved with dog. Uh, basically, I grew up in the dog sport. Or like my father did French training. He was a decoy and he was a handler. And uh, so basically, I grew up in the dog sport, and I always been around Malinois well, most of my life. Yes. And uh, what is the name of your father? Uh, Patrick. Patrick mm -hmm. Massart. Yeah, this is my father. And uh, this is him who introduced me to like dog sports in general. And basically with French ring when I was very young age. My first bite, I was six years old. And I was just on a jacket because it was way too big, right? So he was a very nice dog. Farouk du Pont des Bergers, his name was. Mm -hmm. I remember like he was yesterday. And that's my first experience biting was with like a bite world dog. Okay, and um, at the moment you are uh, into monitoring. Yes, why not? I'm in monitoring, but uh, I start with French ring. Okay. And I just fell in love with monitoring a little bit later. How long you were doing French ring? Uh, I did French ring for maybe 10 years. Maybe, yeah, a little bit less because I start to be a decoy and soon I was a decoy. I was monitoring and French ring at the same time. I passed the certification the same day for both disciplines. Okay. So I already start the same way. I start when I was 14 to really train myself to be a decoy. I start as a French ring decoy, but uh, it's more when I was 16, 17 that I like met Bernard Juno and Marcel Bayer and all this team from Grand Saint. Or they may make me discover monitoring. And I start to be a decoy with them, helping them. and. Uh, at which age? I was like 17. 17. 17, yes. Right before I get my certification. So you got your certification in French ring and monitoring at the same time? At the same time, yes. I was more a French ring decoy at the beginning and I was learning monitoring. That's how like, the monitoring journey becomes. Like, and uh, did you uh, compete also with a dog? or? Uh, yes, I was a French ring competitor with Demos du Bande des Armelles. So when I was 18, I was able to buy my first dog and that I did because before my father was not too in, it's like, oh, you're not responsible <laughs> and like you don't have money to pay if something happened to the dog. Okay. So soon I start to make some money, I bought my first dog and uh, that's why I started. It was the Brand des Armel. and I did French ring, I did selective. I've been to the cup in 2013. 13? Yeah, 13. Yes. In Quimperlé, in mm -hmm. East France. Okay. So that was a big accomplishment for me or like I was watching all those big handlers from French Ring and I always wanted to be there. So it was a big accomplishment for me to put that dog at the finale. He gave me a lot, like he teach me a lot for sure. So at the moment uh, you live in US? Yes. Uh, which state? Uh, so I live in California, in Southern California, so close to San Diego. Okay, Washington. how long you are there? Uh, it's been... No, almost four years, but when I first moved in USA, I was in Florida. So I was in Florida for uh, almost three months, and after I moved to California. Okay, and then why you moved to US? So I moved to USA basically just because my wife, like I met somebody. So at the beginning, I was working in France, not being professional for dog training, only working as a regular job. And uh, I was visiting USA, like traveling just as a decoy. And uh, my friend, Jimmy Vanov, mm -hmm. so, who is a French guy who moved to USA, brought me over to train dogs. And basically, that's how I met my future wife in that time. And she's, she's, a, she's, she's, she's a Greek, actually eh? My wife. Yes, she's, she's Greek. Greek. Yes. Yes, yes. So she's, uh, her parent was born in Greece, and she's basically first generation. Okay. Um, and what, how is life in the US compared to Europe in general? And after I will ask about the dogs also. Yeah. I mean, in general, it's very different. Like, life, it's kind of a little bit different in USA. Mm -hmm. or I would say it's a working life, or like you need to work a lot. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy hours, but 
it's almost for everything, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, compared to France, or I was a little bit more on a schedule per week, hour per week. And so it's more work. It's way more work for sure. So it's not so much the dream. That's what they yeah. say, people like like the American dream. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you're a very hard worker, you can make money and it's able to make a living. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy. Like they say, you go there and you just get whatever you want. No, it doesn't work like that. Like you need to be a hard worker and you need to be very smart about the decision you make in USA. Mm -hmm. And what is the difference professionally in US and in Europe with dogs? Like, <clears throat> sorry, my primary business, it's basically the pet training. Pet and, training? Yes, pet training. So this is my first business in USA. And uh, my secondary business, I would say, it's sport training, mm -hmm. or like more monitoring, French training based. And um, I would say it's different because people in USA are willing to put more money in the pet training mm -hmm. to be able to have a better dog and to be able to enjoy the dog more in like public area. So they are okay to spend more money basically to train dogs and uh, to train their dog to be a better dog. So I believe in Europe people doesn't want to like spend time and money on making their pet better. They think oh you have a good pet or you have a bad pet, right? But uh, that's it. That's it. You cannot fix it. And there is really a way to fix it. People come with us with like it's a member of their family. That's what changed in USA, I think, too. Mm -hmm. Like in Europe, it's a dog is a dog. As in USA, like a dog is kind of a little bit more. It's like a member of the family, right? So they have to invest more. More and time. And they feel bad if the dog has bad behavior. They want to fix it. They are. Do you think there are other differences also? I mean, in USA and Europe, it's different Like for the sport, basically, like, in France and in Belgium, we have like a long time history of like it's club or like it's a family or everybody put a little money just to make this alive, right? As in USA, it's way more made as a business and like people are more willing to or like to pay for a service as like they use more to like pay somebody to cook for you, pay somebody to like cut your grass or pay somebody, mm. it's a service. So I really believe the mentality is different because of like they have this mentality of like, oh, if you do a job for me, I need to pay you. And in France, it's like, oh, if we work together, we maybe like can help each other, right? So mm -hmm. this is what I try to do in USA or have a club, a small club, and try to get only good people and like people willing to spend time and like invest this themselves, you know, in the in sport. So you prefer the French style? Than yes, the... for sure. My cotization in my club for USA is very low mm -hmm. or like you need to like to be a, not a good handler but a good person somebody or like will make the sport better mm -hmm. and my club better to be in a club it's not about the money but of course i do seminar and i do private lesson but uh, the club is the club and marvel canine wing sport it's a uh, i try to make it like a family and uh, now that you mentioned your uh, your uh, dog training uh, brand yes. from where did you came up with this name so I came up with my wife who was looking for a name and uh, looking for di different options and uh, we were thinking some different name for my company and we come up with this Marvel King and just we got lucky nobody thought about it before and yes. it was like not because I'm a big fan of like the Marvel comics yes, or, yes, yes. but it's just a good name or like you can marvel your canine and yes, all yes, this yes. advertising. So it was a very good name, I think. Since many years, you changed from French ring to Mondoring. Mm -hmm. um, so that means you prefer Mondoring. Doesn't mean I prefer Mondoring, but uh, I moved to USA, and French ring is very small over there. So the competition is like very tiny compared to like European competition. So uh, what I really enjoy in dog sport, I think it's a very competitive competition or with a lot of handler and where I can prove my training and my dog. So uh, over sea, I mean over ocean and like being in USA, I really believe like monitoring it. It was the way to go for me mm -hmm. to access to a high competition. And mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I prefer monitoring as French training, it's different. And if the competition will be very hard in USA, I will probably do French training too. Okay. But why not? It's not mm -hmm. what it is. So. But uh, in US, uh, the sport that existed before, it was French ring. Mm -hmm. 
So it started with French ring, yes. And this was the first ring sport that yes, came to. Yes, basically, yeah. Maybe I'm not very good in history in Montreal yes. and like USA because I was not there. Yes, right? yes. But uh, I believe yes that French ring was first like 30 or 40 years ago, mm. and uh, Montreal came after. Mm. But uh, we can see you now like in in USA like Montreal, especially in California where I live, become really big. Like in my trial example this year, I had. 80 people 80 yes it was really really good and other trail in california up north example like north california close to san diego to san francisco was almost the same close to 100 people so i think it's really growing up mm -hmm. and like monitoring is taking this new step or like mm -hmm. the sport look good the competitor the dog look good so people enjoy to watch the routine and and this year, I think you have from US, uh, it's you competing and you competed already and you got yes, a second place. Yeah, I competed. Congratulations. Really Thank you. Yeah, that was a good experience for me. Yeah, so I was able to test my training here. At, like a young dog, he's three years old now. So. But a good uh, good performance. Yes, it was a good performance for me. Yeah. It was a hard program, so I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. So another uh, participation is Margaret. Uh, in level one, level yes, one. but uh, the dog was injured okay. and couldn't play. Like, represent, yes. And, and Anthony in and Paul Anthony, yeah, or oh, he's competing with his dog Finn. So the dog is a well-known dog in USA. Yes, and he's like nine years old, I believe now. So he has some experience mm -hmm. already. So he's he has a regular competitor. He has many world championships behind him. Do you see a difference between the? European handlers and the American ones? I don't see difference. I mean, experience-wise, for sure, US handlers are like less experienced because of, of we have not many competition and like our national, it's small sometimes. And so I believe like European handler has way more experience. Than, but you can see some really good trainer in USA actually. And like people are thinking or like how to get better doing monitoring. And a lot of people are learning some good stuff mm -hmm. and trying to do their best. So I believe in the future years, and I hope, we will get more competitors from USA and more competitive from the future. Which are the main differences between French Ring and Monduring? I mean, the spirit of the sport, I believe, is different, right? Or like, the French Ring is really like, a, I would say, like, a, we cannot say it's a fight, but it's really like, an adversity with the decoy and the dog and it's all about the decoy techniques versus the dog techniques right and uh, as more during the program it's i would say against the dog the full program so when you start more during in french ring you know what's gonna happen in advance you know the decoy very well usually and you know their move or you can try to like train them when we come in more during competition we never know what's gonna happen and it's many things we never train for. Always when you step on it, you say, oh, I don't know if my dog will do it. Like, as I was way more confident in French training with my dog, or I knew it would do good. Like maybe miss one big exercise, it can happen, but usually do good as monitoring, it could be like very, very good in one day and the next day it's terrible, right? So. Yeah, we saw many examples in this competition. Yes, we saw it for sure. And it's been a couple of years now in like championships, so the routine is really hard, right? It's like always the searches we can see. It's like it's sometimes we think if it's impossible to make if we never train. It. It's like. And what do you think? Like uh, the, in the last, also this year, we see that uh, only a small percent of dogs, like 10 percent, maybe even less, mm -hmm. they find the uh, decoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think of that? Do you like it? Do you agree I, with that? Or I believe it should be hard and like. We're looking for see how the dog hunt, right? And it's a quality we're looking for, but I believe it should be like realistic and like something we can do and doable. Doable, exactly. And I was looking for the word, but I don't think sometimes if it's doable, right? Mm. If you never train it. So I don't know. I'm not a big fan of because it's missing a big point of like we don't know what vigilance the dog has, we don't know his hunt drive because it's too hard. And it's hard to say, oh, he's a good dog or he's not a good dog for searching, right? So, Plus, we lose uh, a really nice exercise, mm -hmm. the escort. The escort, exactly. That's my point. Or like the vigilance of the dog, we cannot judge it. 
because like we don't see any surface. Uh, people were talking about maybe separate like the searching that the escorting and I don't know it's a big discussion about that right it's like, so but no I'm not a big fan of those very hard searches and I believe we should try to help the dog first just to see quality right it's like yes um, in this competition also the work from the decoys yes. uh, it's really in, in especially in the stick attack mm -hmm. and the object is not so easy yes. as we see from the dogs mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of skiving mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, I, I saw at least uh, punching a little bit in the face of the dog and things that they are out of the regulations the regulation what is your idea about that I mean I believe like Sometimes when we start the championships, we want to be hard, right? And as a decoy, and we want to do always better. And the first day was probably hard for him to like do a, a good job as a monitoring face. I mean, monitoring decoy. But uh, I believe he's fixing himself a little bit, and I kind of enjoy the work now. But uh, I agree, some faces at the beginning was kind of difficult. Maybe it's because the decoy is naturally punching and. That's what he do with natural, and it's hard for him to control mm -hmm. himself. But yeah, on th it was first day, the first day. Yes. It was kind of a little bit hard to make it the, the actual work, right? Yes. But I believe now they are getting a good routine, and it's the same for every dog, right? Mm. It depends on opinion. <laughs> yes. But some dog goes on, they get a yes. hard face. Yes. If they jump it, they get a, yes. a more regular face, yeah? Yes. Anyway. So it's a big discussion. Like yes, yes. And it's always a discussion. Exactly. And I would say it depends on like, how do you learn and where do you learn monitoring. Like, if you learn it in France, it's maybe more okay than if you learn monitoring in Belgium, right? Or like Belgium, they used to have more like yes. target offer to the dog and no pivot and no escape. And so I really believe it's how you, how, how you feel about the spirit of the dog. And I would say it. 50-50, right? It's like I think because, you know, all of us, we make a big investment in money, time and uh, psychological sure. energy mm -hmm. uh, that the right thing is that we keep training on the rules so that we expect at least some things because mm -hmm. our sport, like you said, it's already too uh, unexpected. For so sure. It's already hard. So yes. We don't need those extra difficulty, you know, I agree. But sometimes it's hard to make a good program. Like, yes. we always want to make it hard, maybe too hard, or mm -hmm. I don't know. So, for many years, um, and until today, you were a competitive decoy. Mm -hmm. um, why you like this work? That's how I start to enjoy dog sport, basically, was doing decoy work, or like, this little aspect of like, Training a dog first was really nice of like teach him how to bite and actually learn how to rescue them and how to make them in difficulty and stuff like that. So that was my first love, I would say, for the sport or like you will need to have this little, it's not a dance, but it's like kind of this choreography with the dog or make sure it's safe and actually you can prove the good dog and the not good dog. That's how I learned mm -hmm. to do dog sport basically like proving dogs and like that's how you learn in France or like they teach you to do competition job like competition work before training right it's always this way or like you learn to put dog in difficulty then you learn to teach them build it up to yes exactly so it was a part of my like I would say journey and like learning experience or like I had to start like that I would say now I really enjoy the handling part most as a decoy part. Like uh, more. Oh yeah, for sure, way more. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, Why? I think you go in different phases in life, you know, or like the mm -hmm. fighting point, or like the adrenaline, or getting beat, and like it was very exciting for me. As now the competition and like the adrenaline, or like seeing like hundreds of competitors and proving yourself there. And, Give me more adrenaline than getting beat anymore. I don't feel anything when I get a dog bite me. It becomes a routine, right? It's like, oh. Yes. So you think when you are young, you want to fight more? Yeah. In the way... It was probably what it was. Yeah, more adrenaline. And I didn't want to fight to get in trouble, but I wanted to like 
yes, 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 yes. And he was like, what is this French ring mentality? Or like, it's it's a duel versus a dog and yes. decoy. We remember we protected and we, we have to be fair with the dog, but we really want to tell them. Mm -hmm. I believe it's a mentality like French ring decoy have or like, you need to like to fight a little bit yes. to be there. So that means you will stop at some point the uh, decoy competitions oh, or? Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, it's in my list. Like. I should stop <laughs> yesterday. <or> yes, <laughs> really. <laughs> no, but uh, I want to do more. I have some goal I never achieved. Like I want to, to finish them before I start. So. Which were which are the these? world championship for sure. So you want to compete to decoy a world to, championship? Yeah, I would like to have my first like the spot from the beginning and not mm. because oh I was the reserve or because this or that. Like they always put me in one and two. So. I believe I'm just good for that, <laughs> but I want to just do one at least. You know. Okay. And probably too, I don't know if I can go in France again and maybe do a level three again and mm. to do French ring again mm. before I get too old. Yeah, that would be one of my goals. But you're young now. Yeah, I'm 40 years old, so yes. I have a couple of years too. Yes. Sure. I wish but you the best. <laughs> at 40 years old, we're not gonna be what I was when I was 25. Yeah, of course, right? yes, so. of course. No, I'll never. I will never do it. Though, so. Yes, I wish you thank you the best. I'm training myself for we'll see. So, as a decoy um, in competition, which is your favorite exercise that you think you are good at? For sure, the face attack with obstacle, and this is my favorite. I mean, it's what we learn first as a French main decoy, and it's very natural for a French decoy to do it, and. I believe it's my favorite, but I really enjoy the search too and the escort. Oh, like it's it's something I enjoy because it's between you and the dog, mm -hmm. and it's like this rivality or like the dog wants to catch you before you leave, and you have to put matter between. So and it's fair. I believe it's really fair exercise. Like. Talking about fairness, what do you think of pushing the dog? Depends how you push him, but uh, in monitoring, not in fencing. Depend when you push him too. If you push him during the escort, no, it's not correct. And uh, but if you push him after missing targeting, example, it's okay. Yeah, for if he has opportunity to bite your arm or your upper body, it's, it's totally okay for me. Yes. But I agree. On in monitoring, we have so many obstacles and we have so many tricks we can use that we don't need to use our hand during the escort. I think so also. No, for sure. But I believe that dog should be technique and should know how to deal with uh, an, an interposition of the arm between them and the target, right? So. Uh, what would you suggest uh, someone that he wants to start decoying or that he wants to prove himself as a good, good decoy? What are your uh, suggestions or advices? I would say advice if you're passionate about it and you always want to learn and you keep ego on the side, you will do well. And I believe, like, if you really believe you're never good at it and you always need to learn that you will get better and never stop learning. So this is my point. But the second point, too, or like to be a decoy, it's hard. And people sometimes doesn't want to make the sacrifice. Mm. And you need to spend hour training. The suit is heavy. You take, like, bruises and, like, you get beat sometimes in the hand. and like accident happens so it's a hard learning experience for sure and if you have enough heart and enough passion you will do it well and remember like to be fair for the dog that's the first thing we always work for the dog never for yourself when you train a dog what is your goal i mean i would say like no i change a little bit and try to, to understand more like behavior and how to teach an exercise more than to try to do the routine perfectly and to repeat that routine over and over. Mm -hmm. I really try to take the exercise and put it in pieces and teach like the really well as the exercise and not try to repeat the routine. Mm -hmm. If it makes sense, I don't know if it makes sense. It, it, this is a little bit the typical way of French ring training. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Every training is the whole program. Yes, exactly. So the dog is used to the used competition. To exactly. But uh, as now, I try to be a little bit more detailed and more technical. Let's say. Yes, exactly. Yes. So I would say I ask way more to a dog now that I used to, 
just because Mondoring asked me more as a trainer too. So um, it's it's another learning phase for me. Or mm -hmm. like I'm still learning, and that's why I come here as like a lower level to see where I am and just to prove myself. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm in a good direction, and I okay. keep going. When you train your dog, do you put the suit for your dog also? Yes, or I do, you, yes. So, so you build up your dogs on you? Yes, usually I teach the first exercise on me and somebody is helping me to handling my dog. But uh, when he has an understanding of the exercise, I try to go around on good decoy in USA when we have one to try to get the decoy works in the repetition, right? So I'm lucky that in California we have a big sport community. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to go see friends and train my dog like once a week. Sometimes oh, I nice. can go to Malibu and see Joe Senante, who is a good trainer, a good decoy, mm -hmm. and actually get some good reps with my dog and some good training. So I feel pretty fortunate. Like, yes. And to have decoys come to me, learning on me, give me some opportunity to work my dog on them too. So example, if somebody is coming and he has some talent as a decoy, of course, I will take the opportunity to, to do a little face or a little object or something on him. People are coming to you to learn also. Yes, to be a jika, yes, yes. Or and, trainers also. And or... train, yes, yes, exactly. So and, uh, we have in Marvel Canine, we like offer possibility to young like trainer or jika to come over and uh, to learn to make a dog business, to learn to be a jika, mm -hmm. to learn to train dogs. And uh, is there an interest from US? Yeah, I mean, to have people come over. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to have like young, motivated people yes. coming. And in USA, sometimes young people have to go to school, they have to work, yes. they have to make money. It's hard. Yes. As if you have like somebody who can take two, three months of his mm. time, come over, see and learn from you. It's, Better. it's good for me, it's good for him. Yes. And everybody's happy. So now the dog you competed uh, yesterday, oh? or yes. no? Yesterday. Uh, it was uh, Wednesday. That Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. And you got the second place. Yes, in uh, level two. Mm -hmm. um, what is the dog? What is the name of the dog? So the dog is Leighton Walton Forest. It's I call him Lethal, basically, and uh, he's a three years old Malinois. It's half French line, Calvados Acacia, mm -hmm. and other half it's Belgium line from the mother side. So okay. it's kind of a good mix between the French dog and the, more, the Belgium dog. So, what type of dogs you prefer now for uh, training, for competition? Like, you like the uh, hard dogs, a little bit the old school type, or you prefer something softer? I, I always enjoy to watch hard dog and old school dog, like, go and hit hard and being super excited for biting. But I'm not, I like them, but I'm not in to that craziness anymore. Or like, mm -hmm. I believe we need a little more, a little bit more dog we can work with it, mm -hmm. and a little bit more sensitivity. Doesn't mean that's what I want, but I think we need it. And my heart say I want the hard one, but my competitor mind say I need something more. So what do you do? You choose. You choose the a little bit easier to cooperate. The dog will be the nice dog, and yes. I believe I got one. Like, mm. or like his bite work, it's very powerful. But actually, his mind stay pretty calm, and he's working with me. Mm. He enjoy playing with me as much he enjoy to go bite. So. Mm. It's really balanced, yes. and that's what we need, I believe. So, how you prepare your dogs for competition so that they are not different in training um, and in competition? Understand. But that's the thing. Or like, I think in USA, the good part is like we don't have to like compete so much, and we don't have to do like ten or fifteen trial a year to be able to qualify, right? So it gives us a little advantage, I believe, in the way we train, and we don't need to prove the competition as much as European need to because we don't have so many trial requests so I prep my dog like carefully prep him I try to condition him and uh, I try to make sure every exercise is clear in his head and not making any confusion before training I really train simple dog work simply and like mm -hmm. I don't do anything complicated or somebody never know I really try to be clear in my training and simple. Um, in your training, uh, would you call yourself like a positive trainer or a balanced trainer? No, or? For sure not positive because I use negative reinforcement and sometimes like 
Punishment for dogs, for punishment, sure. Okay. Yeah, punishment, of course. Like I think everyone like in the dog sports of course, no. have to and use this. I'm very balanced, I believe. Or like I use a lot of reward, probably more than like correct my dog. Mm -hmm. And I believe it should be that way. If the punishment is higher than the reward, that means something is wrong, right? And, and I think you can see the results. Yes. So if the dog is happy, mm -hmm. that means what you're doing is good for the it's dog. Good for the dog, of course. And I don't. I mean, I learned in France back in the day, and I don't want to. I think we have new methods and we have new way to teach dog. No? As like, it's a new. I think young like new trainer believe on it, and like, and I believe on it. Or like, I can. I'm gonna try to prove with balanced training that. We can go higher. And... Yes, uh, but in US things are better than Europe with the um, welfare laws and the mm -hmm. welfare movements. Mm -hmm. In US things are a little bit easier for dog trainers. It is why not, but it's going on the same size of like Eastern Europe and stuff like that. Or like we can see politicians talking about like equal ban and stuff like that. So for now it's okay, it's better, but. Uh, in the future, I don't believe it will be better. Mm. I really believe like this movement is going to go overseas and just go hit USA pretty soon, pretty soon. And we have already people try to fight about it. Mm -hmm. We can see with the Great Hunt, like with the Great Hunt, or it was banned in USA. That is. Yes, exactly. So we can say thought it was bad. I don't believe it was bad. Like those dogs are athletes. They do a job they love to do, like us, our dog, right? So, I don't know. I think it's going a little bit way too far in this direction. And, and in my opinion, this movement creates animals that are not balanced. Mm -hmm. Of course. And as professionals, it's good for us because we, uh, we yeah, have more work. work, more work. Mm -hmm. But I think in a long term, that... Uh, it's going to be an issue or like... I believe like dog who will be like euthanasia and like yes. dog with bad behavior and aggression will be way higher and we will see more accidents with dog bite somebody, kids or whatever. Yes. We see enough and I think we have like a balance of training right now and if we go only in a positive way for those behavior, it will be a big, big Probably. issue, big problem, yes. Mm -hmm. And why do you think people are so fun of uh, positive training. I think I believe it's it's a new generation now. Like they cannot deal with pressure and negative. And I believe to be clear in your head, you need pressure, right? In yes. one point to know what is good, what is bad. Yes. And I believe people and sociologues probably make mistake and parent and it's a big. Yes, like it's deeper. Uh, yes, thing. in deeper in the mentality that we think, and yes. they apply it to dog. No? That's the crazy part. Or like a dog is a dog, and you should not be treated like a human. But also humans, we are based our whole civilization in rules and mm -hmm. uh, and laws. Mm -hmm. So this is pressure. This is pressure, and you know the consequence when you don't follow the law, right? You will get some negative from it, and. That's why you don't do it, correct? And yes. like, I don't do bad stuff either because I know the consequences. Yes. When you don't have that, it's a problem. It's a big problem. And I believe first the kid now don't have that anymore. You can yeah. see with professors at school and everywhere. Yes. No, this only positive way to learn. I believe it's good as positive we can go for learning. But in one point, you need some pressure and yes. to be able to like. How balanced uh, behavior. Balance. Exactly, exactly. So, I think it's not doing in a good way with the kids and it's leaking over dogs. Yes, and I agree. It's not good at all. So, Francois, uh, which are your plans for the future? Do you have an ultimate dream you want to achieve? Yes, accomplish? for sure. Like, I would love to one day go to the World Championships in level 3. And uh, to do well at competition, for sure, that's my, my goal right now. And like I said earlier, like my decoy achievement is still there and I need to work for it still. So. I wish you the best for Thank your plans. You. Thank you.
Um, just to know, uh, François is uh, giving also seminars around the, yes. the world. The world, yes. Um, how is this experience? It's great. Like I enjoy it. So now it's been four years. I'm doing seminar everywhere in Europe, uh, in Europe and in USA and everywhere in the world. I would say, but it, like I met a lot of people. I prove a lot of things in my training, or like I see hundred, thousand of different dogs applying the same techniques with them, and it works. Uh, I believe it makes me a better trainer. Mm -hmm. It made me a better decoy training, and uh, to deal with all those different dogs, it just gives me more and more every day. So I'm pretty fortunate for that, for sure. So uh, how can someone find you? You have a website or? Yes, I have a website. You can go on marvelcanine.com. Okay, good. Or you can contact me on my Facebook page, François okay. Massard. Perfect. On Facebook with Marvel Canine too. So. so François, I really want to thank you for giving me this interview and uh, to congratulate you for thank you. second place. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And in this competition, I think uh, it was second place, it's, uh, nice, it's, yeah. it's worth, yes. It's always better to be first, but like, Yes. I'm very happy with the so routine from the first was very amazing and I have no regret. It was yes. it was better than I did. So it was cool. So thank you very much. much. It was a pleasure. And have a nice trip back thank in your you long uh, journey. Yeah right. Thank you for the interview. It was good. Thank, thank you very you. much. Surfing.